Hey everyone, I'm Mackenzie Lee and I'm here again to bring you recommendations from my bookstore to your bookshelves. Who says we can only talk about women's history in March? Let's talk about women's history always! So screw you, calendar. We're doing a Women's History Month recommendation video even though it is not March anymore. I'm a rebel. I play by my own rules. So, my first recommendation is Unmentionable by Teresa O'Neill. The subtitle of this book is The Victorian Lady's Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners. It is exactly as billed. This book is all about uh, the private lives of Victorian women. Um, and since the Victorians themselves were notoriously private, they didn't really talk about this kind of stuff. Um, and because we as a population are sort of weird about this stuff too, especially when it comes to women, we also don't talk about this stuff, especially in regards to history. This book will answer all your questions about things like where did Victorian women go to the bathroom? How did they deal with their periods? Did they masturbate? What was it like to have sex? What was birth control like? All these questions that we probably all think about when we're watching like BBC period dramas, but none of us ever ask. This book asks them, this book answers them. It's so funny. It's got a lot of illustrations um, and like ads and uh, infographics and things from the time period with very, very witty captions by the author. This book made me laugh out loud multiple times. Um, it's just really funny. It's really fun. And it answers a lot of questions about things in history we don't really talk about. That's Unmentionable by Teresa O'Neill. My next recommendation for Women's History Year is Lady Killers, Deadly Women Through History by Tori Telfer. This book is exactly what it sounds like. It is about women serial killers throughout history. So one of the things I feel really strongly about is how we portray women in history, specifically the women we choose to remember. Women who aren't entirely virtuous or entirely good usually get overlooked because we're only comfortable with women who are 100% virtuous, and that makes me really angry. So I like this book. I actually love this book. It's really funny. Um, it's very accessible. It's short biographies about different murderesses. Is that a word? Different murderesses throughout time. And it just, like, in general, I like that it sort of gives women in history permission to be wicked in a very often unapologetic way. This is about bad girls, and I really like that. So that's Lady Killers by Tori Telfer. My next recommendation is Queer There and Everywhere by Sarah Prager. We often fall into this trap of thinking that queer people didn't exist in history before Rent came out. This is a lie. There have been queer people for as long as there have been people, and this book explores not just the history of queerness, but also the entire range of the LGBTQ spectrum. There are dudes in this book, obviously, but it's a really great book and I chose to highlight it because it also features trans women and non-binary people and a lot of people who just like don't get their due in, in modern stories, let alone in historical stories. It's written very in these like very short, snappy biographies. It's very accessible. It's very readable. If you can't tell, I have a hard time reading long-form nonfiction, so I like all of these books because they're very digestible. So that's Queer There and Everywhere by Sarah Prager, which also wins the award for cleverest title of all time. My next recommendation is Rejected Princesses by Jason Porath. You might know Rejected Princesses because it was a blog for a long time before it was a book. Now it is two books. The next one comes out in May, just came out, is coming out very soon. Oh, shiny, my enemy. It's called Tough Mothers, <laughs> that's the point. So, Rejected Princesses and Tough Mothers by Jason Porath. Um, Jason used to be an illustrator for DreamWorks Animation, and you can tell because he does these really, really gorgeous pieces of artwork to go with his uh, short biographies. Let's see if I can find one. I mean, like, they're all gorgeous, so... Also, if you're reading this book with kids and you're looking for something for, like, the goodnight stories for Rebel Girls for your little ones, these books have a very helpful rating system for each story so you know which ones are for children and which ones are not. He also talks about women in um, mythology, women in history, women who are, like, semi-legendary and we don't totally know if they existed or not, but also he really, really fact-checks and he really, really works hard and you can tell that he's done his homework and I love these books. They're so readable, they're so funny, and the artwork is totally gorgeous. So that is Rejection. Princesses and Tough Mothers by Jason Porath. Curse you foil stamp. My next recommendation is a picture book because I love picture books and don't get to talk about them very often. That book is Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History by Vashti Harrison. I love this book. I have loved this book from the moment I first saw it pop up on my Twitter because the artwork is so adorable. And then when you get into it, the biographies are so interesting, and she talks about a lot of really well-known black women in history, but also a lot of less-known women in black history. Like Alice Ball, who was a chemist who discovered a cure for leprosy, and Sojourner Truth, and Bessie Coleman, who was a pilot, and Shirley Chisholm, and all these incredible women that should be role models for everybody. Not just black girls, but it's especially important that black girls see themselves as awesome women in history. 
history. This is a great book for kids, it's a great book to give to adults who have kids because they'll love the stories too, and it's a great book just for adults because you will learn all these amazing stories and also get to see these adorable illustrations, and then you'll be armed with an arsenal of new role models from black history. That's Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History by Vashti Harrison. And my last recommendation is a novel that I have been obsessed with for a long time. I read this book a while ago because I got to blurb it, and I have been very grouchy about the fact that I could not hand sell it and force it upon people until now! It's here now at last! That book is Blood, Water, Paint by Joy McCullough. So if you follow me on any social- oh my gosh, this book is so shiny. That's beautiful. That's not a foil stamp, that's just like shimmer. So Blood, Water, Paint is a novel. It is a novel in verse, but don't let that intimidate you. But it's a true story. It is about a woman named Artemisia, and she has a last name that I won't try and pronounce because I can never pronounce it, and it's Italian, and it's really hard for me. Okay, so this book is about Artemisia. She was a real woman who lived in the 1600s in Rome, and she was an artist. She was part of the very, very male-dominated art scene, and she put up with a lot of crap because of that fact. So when she was 16, she was raped by one of her father's students, but rather than stay silent about it, Artemisia did something that was totally rare for her time period, which she actually took her rapist to court, and she had him prosecuted, and she suffered, like, ugh, they were so awful to her, and she, saw, she went through so much because she prosecuted her rapist, but that was a thing that nobody was doing in the 1600s. Like, it's a rare enough thing today that women are able to take the men who abuse them to court and find justice. And this book is so empowering. I felt, like, strong and powerful. It was like after you walk out of the movie Wonder Woman and you're just like, oh, I want to smash something! Like, the patriarchy! This book is so empowering and so powerful and so just, like, spare and gorgeous. And I love how Joy McCullough works in the sort of not only Artemisia's narrative, but also the narratives of the women in the biblical paintings that she's working on throughout the book. This book is gorgeous. Everybody should read it. Everybody should know her story. Everybody should know her name. That's Blood, Water, Paint by Joy McCullough. Those are my recommendations for you if you're looking for more stories of kick-ass women in history in your life. Don't forget to subscribe to Epic Reads on YouTube. You can follow me at the Mackenzie Lee on Instagram and Twitter. And also, if you have questions about women's history books, if you have recommendations, if you know books I missed that you really, really love, please tell me in comments. I would love to hear from you and have a fantastic life. I don't know how to sign off these videos.